this was meant to happen to me. This has happened for a reason. I'm gonna do what I can to make the best of it. Cheerleading means a lot to me. It's something that I live for, I love it. It's, it's my family. She was an amazing cheerleader and it was so important. I, it was just, it was my thing. It was my go away place that if I was having a bad day, I would go to cheer and get it all out there. And it was just, it was my home. The level that I was at, there was only three teams in the whole world that were able to be at that level and stay at that level. My first year I was on it, we went undefeated. We won nationals, and then we went to ESPN Wide World of Sports, which is called Worlds. And that's like the Super Bowl, it's the final competition. And we were able to win not only in our division, but we beat every team in every division. And we were the grand champions, which is pretty cool. She doesn't have any regrets because she gave 110% to cheerleading and she reached every goal that she had ever set for herself. It was September 20th and it was the week of homecoming. I remember like it was yesterday. The football players and the cheerleaders, we did like a country dance together. And so we were at a friend's house practicing the dance. A lot of us decided we were gonna teach the boys how to do like this flip. It just went wrong. I went back and flipped and landed straight on my throat in the, in the grass of the backyard. And as crazy as this sounds, it, I knew instantly that I was paralyzed. I received a phone call and they said it was serious that she couldn't feel her legs and that they had called the ambulance. A calm sensation I just felt through my body that I was like, okay, I'm laying here. I'm not gonna try and get up. I'm just gonna lay here and I know I have to stay calm. I was so scared and it was so overwhelming. And the hardest thing was, is like once I got there, she was so calm. Like you would not even know that she had broken her neck. It felt like an eternity, laying on that ground and hearing the sirens come up. The first thing she said was, Mom, I'm gonna be fine. They're poking her toes and they're like, Michaela, can you feel this? And like, as a mom, I am sitting there like willing her, like, please feel something, like move your toes or say you can feel something. It was heartbreaking. Patient being transported at this time. In the beginning, if I'm being completely honest, I didn't want to accept that I was in a wheelchair and going to be in a wheelchair. I was an athlete, I was invincible. I told the doctor, I said, listen, please don't sugarcoat things. Just tell me straight up, like, t give me everything. He said, you know, she'll never walk again. I remember those feelings, like, it was heart-wrenching, like, and I couldn't even imagine life. Like, I couldn't imagine her never walking again. I'm in a wheelchair and this isn't something that defines me. It's actually there to help me. I've grown to love my wheelchair and I appreciate it so much. It's given me the ability to go wherever I want, do whatever I want. Thank you, ma'am. There I go. Hi! I miss you. Here we go. Hi. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, cheerleading is the reason I'm in this chair, but more than that, cheerleading has made me who I am today, you know? It's made me such a strong person, and I knew that once I was ready enough, I wanted to get back at it. That was better. That was better. Hi, everybody. I'm here with my mom and my sister, and we thought we would answer some of y'all's top questions because you guys are very curious to know more about me. The platform that I've gained through this all is I think a blessing, it's something I never expected. We post daily updates of things I'm doing and posting the small victories and posting the, the things that, that went wrong that day. And looking back, even the day of my accident, I knew I wanted to document it all. When I was in the ambulance, I asked my mom to take a picture of me because I was like, we're gonna document this. Like, this is going to be something. What we found is 
being vulnerable and sharing this has helped so many people. They have fallen in love with Michaela and this story, and people are so invested in this that they're like, you can't stop now. It's definitely not quick, but it works. Uh-oh, maybe too far. And once I have a house of my own, it will be hardwood and no carpet. I hate doors. This might be it. Oh my gosh. Hallelujah. And we got the door closed. I absolutely let myself have those moments of anger, frustration, sadness, and just missing the old version of myself and missing the carefree version of myself. I have my sister. I have my sister talking for me today. Interpreting. Interpreting. I've kept this. And I kept this a secret. I can feel my I can feel my legs. And my toes. And my toes. And everything. And everything. I'm really happy. Really happy. Really happy. Really happy. I don't try and stop myself from crying or saying, oh, it's okay, because it's not okay. This isn't something that's okay. But after those moments are over and after those emotions have been felt, I say, okay, done with that, and we'll keep moving on throughout the day. I still have high goals for myself. I have high expectations, and they're gonna be more challenging to achieve, but I'm, I'm gonna go for them, and I'm gonna do them. On your feet and welcome, Michaela. Stand Thank up on your feet. It's awesome. You're so loved. Thank you. You're so loved. Listen, y'all can sit down, but I know y'all follow a lot of influencers on Instagram. And if you're gonna follow any influencer on Instagram, it needs to be this girl. If you're gonna watch anybody's Thank YouTube you. channel, it needs to be this YouTube channel. <laughs> Um, I love your page. I don't Thank even you. really watch YouTube channels, but I find myself watching you and your sister and your mom because y'all are just so cute Thank and the you. best. You are such an inspiration. Thank you such so an inspiration. Much. And we're gonna get into all that. But you just shared with me two cool things. Yes. And I want them to hear it because I think yes. it's really special. Um, so my first big thing is today's my actual 11 months since my accident. And it's like each month on the day of my accident, it's like a big deal. Um, and if you've been through like a traumatic accident, a lot of people call that day like your alive day. Um, it's kind of a day that God could have taken you away from this earth and your family and friends, but he chose not to and he said, I'm not done with you yet. Um, so it's a really big day to celebrate. So I'm super excited that I get to spend it with y'all. That's amazing. Yeah. Your alive day. And you know what's so cool is it's like on your alive day, here you are, and like so many other people are having alive days in their spiritual life. You yeah. know, it's like this is the day that the Lord saved me. And I just think that's so cool. And then the other thing I thought was really cool was the significance of your age, which yeah. is so fun. So I'm 17, and I just, DC and uh, Sadie here were talking about like their ages and when they were 17, how they really took their next step in, um, in their journey with God. And I just thought it was cool that uh, I related to them. And I'm 17 and I'm here and I'm starting this journey. It's it. new and recent, but I'm so excited to continue it. And I just know there's gonna be hopefully some big things coming from it. Yes, oh, already there has been, it's amazing. What's up, fam? I want to talk to you about Liberty University, a Rob fam fave. Go Flames. They have such an incredible mission of training champions for Christ, which is seriously um, and seen for everything that they do from big to small. So not too long ago, I took some classes online at Liberty because, hey, it's a good thing to stay learning no matter what stage of life you're in. And they have more than 450 online degrees to choose from. So friend, I know you're going to find something that you're wanting to seek out, whether it's a career that you're wanting to study or passionate about, even if it seems maybe random, I'm sure you can find it there. 450, they have a lot to cover. And most classes are 100% online. 
online. So who doesn't love that? No matter what your schedule is, you can find something that works for you. Their classes have eight start dates per year in eight weeks, and there is no set login time. So that's why it is uh, seriously amazing, and so many people love it because if you have a busy schedule, it fits in quite nicely. My sister actually is in Liberty Online right now. So I know you're going to love Liberty too, whether you're wanting to um, attend in person or study online. There's so many options. They really just make it so easy, and they have the best professors. And not only did I love taking classes online from Liberty, but like I mentioned, my sister Bella does too. John Luke went as well, my brother, and my brother Will went, and they attended in person actually and loved their time there. Um, and actually, some of our favorite parts about Liberty is actually the campus. It's absolutely beautiful and has so many different fun elements to it. So whether you're like me and looking to take classes online or to pursue a degree in person, Liberty is perfect for you, my friend. And to start your future now, you can go to liberty.edu slash Sadie. And because you're a Whoa That's Good podcast listener, you actually get your application fee waived if you decide Liberty is the place for you. So friend, don't wait. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie now and get your future started today. I love that verse that says, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. And then it goes even further to say, but set an example in love and speech and purity. And that is what you're doing. Like you are an example to so many people. I was hearing a story last night about an older gentleman who didn't know the Lord, had gone away from the Lord and came back to the Lord because of your story. And I just know like that's happening all around the world from your, the way you've walked this out. I wanna talk to you about the way you walked this out because I think for a lot of people, bad things happen, hard things happen, and it's like they wait until a miracle happens to give praise to God, or they wait until like the miracle happens or they're waiting for it to happen in order to like let God use their story. But what I love about you is you're letting God use your story right where you're at. Like you're letting God use your story while you're sitting in that wheelchair. You're letting God use your story before you see some kind of miraculous healing. Like you're like right here, right now, God's using my story. And so even you said, get the phone out. Like we're gonna document this. How did you have that kind of faith in that moment to be like, I'm gonna let God use me in this moment, in this story? Just from the second the accident happened, I don't know, I just, I said it in the video. I just felt such a sense of peace and calmness and I, it's God, I don't know how else to describe it. You know, I was laying on the grass with 30 teenagers around me and you know, teenagers are not common situations like that, like anyone would be, but I was just laying there and I was like, okay, I'm gonna stay calm, I have to stay calm and I know things are gonna be okay, it doesn't seem okay right now and I didn't realize how serious it was, but I just, I just was able to stay calm and just know that God, God has a plan for me and this is his plan for me. It wasn't like he wasn't watching and something slipped and happened and I had an accident. No, it wasn't an accident. God did it on purpose for a reason, for a bigger reason than me and my cheerleading career. I, it was supposed to happen to me and it did happen to me when it was supposed to happen. So I don't know, I just was able to really just fully dive into my relationship with the Lord and just believe whatever he has for me that that's, I'm gonna just trust in him and follow his path because his path is so much better than mine. So good, so good. Yeah. I, think, I think what's amazing is it's like, I think a lot of people, it's like we can get so, you know, we're, we don't take our faith so seriously and then when big moments happen, then we're like, oh, we need Jesus, we need to take our faith seriously. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, where's Jesus, where's Jesus? But for you, it's like you, this is who you are. You love Jesus, you had a relationship with him, you already trust him. And so when this happened, you were able to say, okay, I trust you. I know your character, God, I know you're good. This isn't good, this doesn't look good, but yeah. you are good. And so I think what's amazing about you is you were so rooted in your faith beforehand that when this happened, it didn't shake your faith, but actually grew your faith. And watching you step into this, I said this to you right before, but you said sometimes it's hard for your family and friends to see that. And I can understand why. And I said, is it hard for you? And you yeah. said, it's really not. And Because you can see what God's doing. And I said, you just have such a supernatural ability to see what God's doing instead of just seeing your circumstance. And I think that's something we can all be inspired by. 
Your sister said after you had an accident, it changed her life by seeing the way that you responded because you were still so joyful. Mm -hmm. And even watching that, you can hardly talk, but your joy was so radiant and your joy was so alive. And everyone who meets you, even my husband was like, she is like joy in a person. Like she is so joyful. Oh. Like what have you learned about joy through this process? I think, I mean, you saw me laying on that bed. In the beginning, I was paralyzed completely couldn't move my neck, couldn't move my arms, shoulders, anything. Um, and just laying in a hospital bed for weeks upon weeks and having everything taken away from you, all the distractions, it really, really leaves you with what you're thankful for um, or what or how miserable you are, you know? Yeah. And I obviously took the route of how much I have to be thankful for and how blessed I truly am even in a situation like that when it's so hard to see the good um, when you're surrounded by all the bad stuff. But I don't know, I was just able to lay there and just really thank and thank people around me. Awesome. Um, just thank God. It's so good, your gratitude. It's like your gratitude defeated the disappointment in that moment. Gratitude is so powerful. I heard it so one time that gratitude defeats fear because where there's gratitude, you can't be afraid. And that's actually really true. And so I used to struggle with fear a lot. And every time fear would begin to come up in my life, based off of whatever the fear was, I would begin to thank God for that thing. So like, I don't know if y'all have this, but sometimes I have like an irrational fear that something's gonna happen to honey or something's gonna happen to Christian. Instead of like sitting in that fear, I say, thank you God that I have an amazing daughter. Thank you God that you've given me such a great husband. And as I begin to thank him, I forget that I was even afraid. And it seems like that was your story in the hospital. It's like thanking the people, thanking God for what he is doing. And when you have gratitude for what you do have, you don't see as much what you don't have. And I think that's such a beautiful picture. I love you and your sister's relationship because our whole thing is hello sister, sisters and friends. Um, I love my sisters so much, both my sisters and my sister-in-laws all I just love sisterhood. And you and your sister are such a beautiful picture of sister. And I know your sister takes care of you a lot. Yes. So tell us a little bit about you and your sister's relationship and what have you learned about sisterhood through how close y'all have gotten over the past 11 months? Oh, so I have an older sister, her name's Mariah, and she's 22 and she's here somewhere. And um, she's just the best girl ever. Um, so when my accident happened, she was, just finished esthetician school, actually, and again, God's timing is crazy, um, but she was kind of at a monumental moment in her life where she was deciding which path she was gonna take, um, and then my accident happened, and she was there every single day, right by my side, with whether I was asleep or uh, awake talking to her or trying to talk to her, um, she was there, and she's always been there since, and she was before too, but just sisterhood is so amazing and just seeing how much love she shows me and gives me, it's just, it's incredible. And I'm just, I'm so thankful for her and um, just the love I've received from so many people. It's, it's crazy that like when you love someone so much and then something happens to you, it's cool to see them showing all their love to you too. Yeah. Friends, what we fill our minds with matter. And I don't know about you, but most of the time, what I remember and focus on in my day really impacts my day. And that's why I love the power behind memorizing scripture. The purpose of this is echoed all throughout the Bible. Memorizing Bible verses has always been something that I'm trying to do. And when Honey is old enough, I cannot wait to see her learn some too and start to teach some to her. There are so many new and fun ways to memorize scripture and Dwell is my favorite way. It is so fun to get to do all the things that Dwell has to offer. Dwell is a monthly membership of scripture scripture designs to help you and your family memorize one verse each month so it's not too daunting y'all can do this each month you will receive a kit that has temporary tattoos like so they're so cute and so fun and um they have a keychain and you can also print the verse out too so the temporary tattoos are so cute like i just said and they make a great conversation starter which is why i love it this one is actually talking about how you are a city on a hill so it's like a little city design it has all the letters that start with the word of what the verse says so it's 
really easy to learn to memorize it. Um, the temporary tattoos, like I said, provide such great conversations because people will ask you about them and you can talk about it with them. So Joella has everyone memorizing scripture from two years old to 102 years old. They have over 2,500 five-star reviews and I know that you're going to love it too. Guys, this is so powerful and I hope that you check it out at dwelladifferently.com. You're going to be amazed at how God can use just one Bible verse to change everything and that month is going to be focusing on that word and man, it's going to change the way that you see things. So to show you how awesome it is, rearrange with Dwell to give you your first month for free with the code Sadie. That's my name. So S-A-D-I-E, super simple. That's dwelldifferently.com and for a limited time only, you can use the code Sadie to get your first month absolutely free. Sisterhood can be through your best friend. Sisterhood can be through the people in your life who are around you and there for you in those moments. And I love how she actually just told me right before too that two of her best friends are here who were there during that moment and literally stayed with her for two weeks in the hospital, missed two weeks of school, but they were just there. And I think that is what sisterhood is all about. It's just being there and it's just showing up. And that's why when the Lord gave me that word to be a sister and a friend to those who don't have one, I was like, that's amazing because being a sister and a friend is the most true, vulnerable relationship. Like you're gonna sit by your sister, you don't care what you look like. Absolutely. Like, you could have B.O. and a booger. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. What the heck? It's my sister. And you just gotta love, you just gotta love those people. And I love how your sister's taking care of you in so many ways. And so for us, like show up for your people, like sisterhood. These moments that Michaela's walked through are not meant to walk alone. Yeah. You walked alone. I think the beauty of maybe even how you have been so joyful has something to do also with the people you've surrounded yourself with. 100%. And so, you know, maybe you're, you haven't gone through something like this, but we all have gone through hard things that we need sisters and friends for. I think it's beautiful. One thing that is so obvious about you is you're like the most motivated person ever. And it's like, it's so inspiring. I just wanna like stand beside you all day and be like, okay, if you can do it, I can do it kind of thing. Cause you're just like going for it. And I love that you still cheer. Yeah. And I mean, we're not talking about this accident was years ago. This is 11 months ago. And you are there cheering with your friends doing, like, didn't you say you did like a, a show or something? Like they, it was like a big competition or something. Oh yeah, we've done a few like pep rallies Yeah, and, and like you're there and you're doing it. Yeah. It's just, and you're not just sitting there, like you're doing the cheers, yeah. which is just amazing. And so I wanna to talk to you about how like, how do you not let a disappointment like this define your life and own you? Because I think a lot of people, it's like, well, I'm in the chair, so it's over. And you're like, I'm in the chair, I'm gonna go cheer in the chair. How do you not let that take you down, but actually use that and still do the things that you love to do? So if I'm being honest, in the beginning, I, my coaches came um, and were like, okay, like, when are we getting back to cheer? When are you gonna cheer again? When I was still in the hospital and I was like, no, like it's, it's done, like I'm done. Obviously look at me, I'm done. And they were like, no, like you're cheering. Like I don't care, you're cheering. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, they're just trying to get me in a better mood. But um, as things came about, the tryout season came about and I was like, if I don't cheer, if I don't, do what I love, I'm gonna regret it so much more than just the fear of getting out there. So I, I signed up and had a meeting and talked to my coaches and they just made me feel a lot better about the situation and I realized, okay, like I'm not gonna stand up and be able to cheer like I used to overnight. I'm gonna be realistic. Um, but if all I can do is the arm movements, then I was like, I'm gonna do the arm movements and I'm gonna do them to the best of my ability and I'm gonna be the best one out there doing the arm movements that's because right. that's all I can do. That's right. So I just, I, I've always had that kind of competitive mindset and it's like, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability um, and give 110% effort and energy. So I was like, I'm just gonna go out there with my best friends, my girls, my sisters. I mean, I've grown up with these girls and it's my senior year and I wouldn't wanna be anywhere else, so even though I'm looking a little different out there, I'm still gonna do it because I have to and I want to. Come on, that's so good, yeah. I love that. Whatever you do, 
You do it at the best of your ability. It reminds me of that verse, and it says, you know, whatever you do, do it as if you're working for the Lord and not for man. And that is what you do. You're like, God gave me this body. This is my live day. I'm gonna be here on stage preaching to people, you know? I'm gonna be at the pep rallies cheering. And we really do take life for granted so often. And with the life that we've given, like live it to the full. You live your life in such abundance and such fullness. And I remember watching the YouTube video of your trial day. And I just like loved it because you're sitting there doing it and you're like, oh, it's just not right yet, it's just not right. And you're pushing yourself to be the best that you can be. And we can all learn from that and we should. Um, not everybody knows this about you because you know you can look at somebody from the outside and you can assume things. You're like, Michaela's in a wheelchair, but she's so beautiful and she's so well-spoken. She's so good at all these things. She's great, you know? But you like work your butt off every single day. Like I see you on Instagram and the gym. You're doing like sit-ups with things. You're like trying to throw balls. They're helping you move everything. Like you're working so hard hard and I love that about you that you're not giving up some of us struggle to even go to the gym on a regular Monday and we're not in a wheelchair and you're going to the gym and getting it done where does that motivation come from to say like I'm not done and my story doesn't have to end here and it might can be better I'm gonna push myself to wish for that like where does that come from um again the competitive mindset just always wanting to be the best that I can be um but again, when I'm having down days and not feeling like going to the gym and not feeling the best, I think back to the moments when I was in the hospital bed, not being able to even get out of a bed for weeks at a time. Um, and just thinking of like, oh my gosh, I'm laying here and I like actually want to go and work out. And I actually kind of want to go to school because I miss those things. Um, but I just think of those moments when I'm like, I used to not be able to do that. And God has given me the ability to gain so much back that I would just, I have to, I have to go and use that and better myself as much as possible. Um, and I always use the phrase, God's not done with me yet because yep. he's not, he's not, um, he's not done with me. He's not done with y'all. Uh, we're all here today and so he's not done with us. So I just think Good. that's like, that's like my biggest thing is God's not done with me. And he has so much in store, not only for me, but you and everyone out here in the crowd, yep. that if he woke us up this morning, like that's a blessing in itself, that's amazing. And I just feel like he's giving us this time and he's giving us these abilities to go out and work hard and do good. So good. I'm, I'm gonna use it. Come on, girl. Yeah. Just. Let's take a moment for that word that God's not done with us yet. Because I feel like that's a word for some people in here today. Um, like on a, on a really real note, like some of you just feel like, what is God gonna use me for? What, what makes me special? You know, nobody cares about me kind of mindset that you've had, this lie the enemy's feeding you that no one cares about you, that you're insignificant, that what's your testimony, sir? What, what have you done? But friend, God is not done with you. God is so for you. He created you, you're alive. The very fact that you are alive holds so much significance. And I think because life was just given to us, we take it so much for granted. But life is such a gift and it is not to be taken for granted. So live to the full. Michaela is such a good example for that. And I know the enemy would love to tell you that no one cares, people care. We care, I care, Michaela cares, God cares, the friends around you care. I know the enemy would love to tell you that you're not significant. Your story is so significant. You might think it's, it's not big enough, it's not crazy enough. The minute God enters your story, it becomes as big as he is. So it's big enough, it's wild enough, it's incredible enough. And so I know some of you would be naive to think that some of you aren't teetering on the line of thinking that you wanna give up on some days. And I just rebuke that lie from the enemy over your life. And I hope that when you have those lies, you hear our voice saying that God is not done with you, that you are loved and that you are significant and that you have a story because he's given you a life to live. And Michaela, you set the most beautiful tone living your life like that. 
Friends, I'm so excited to tell you about this because it has been something that I use often, especially during busy seasons like this one, because I'm not always, you know, able to have the time to just sit and read. And we all have a million books that we want to read, right? And mine just keeps growing. But one thing I do have time for is to listen to stuff. Listen to stuff as I'm working, hanging with honey, doing my makeup, finishing exciting projects or whatever it might be. Audible makes it so easy for me to listen to thousands of titles throughout my week, whatever I want to listen to, and get all my audio entertainment in one app. And today, I want to tell you how you can try it for 30 days for free if you are new to Audible. Audible has all your favorite titles and tons of new ones to explore. I mean, hey, between thousands of titles and their incredible selections available, you are bound to find something new that you will love. One feature that's really cool is Audible Originals. Um, and that's where it includes several names that you will know, leading experts, and even some new voices that you'll learn so much from. One of my favorite titles I love listening to is Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. I talked about that a lot. We even had her on the podcast, and she has so many more titles on there that I'm excited to play. So not only can you listen to your favorite titles, but you can also pick from thousands of podcasts. I actually um, have a good feeling you're going to like them because you can listen to this podcast on there as well. As a member of Audible, it lets you choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog so you can hang on to your favorites. I travel a lot throughout the year and Audible makes it super easy to listen anytime and anywhere. So maybe you're like me and you're someone who likes to listen while you work out. There are so many different things that you can listen to. So remember, new members are going to get to try Audible for free for 30 days if you visit audible.com slash Sadie. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E, audible.com slash Sadie, S-A-D-I-E, or text Sadie to 500-500. Super easy. Just text Sadie to 500, 500 to get started with Audible today. You posted a picture and it was of your scar and it was of, you put as the caption of Philippians 4, 6, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, present your request to the Lord. So, you know, that verse is hard for anyone to say. Don't be anxious about anything. Yeah. I mean, we can think of like 10 million things we're probably all anxious about right now. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything. So I gotta ask you, for someone who you could have reason to be anxious, Absolutely. you could start to think about the future, how do you practically put that into play? Like how do you practically begin to give your anxieties to the Lord? Again, easier, way easier said than done. I mean, we all are stressing about the littlest things, you know, what we're doing tomorrow, what we're gonna have for dinner, you know? Um, but I think my accident, I hate that it took my accident for me to realize that I don't need to stress about the future so much and others don't need to. Um, but again, just giving it to the Lord and being like, God, I, I don't know why I've spent all this time worrying about my future and planning out my next step and what I'm gonna do when I go to college and what I'm gonna major in and it's, you already have it planned. You have it set in stone, you've already created it and I just felt like I wasted so much of my precious time um, worrying about things that were never gonna happen and creating fake scenarios, you know, in your brain of, oh my gosh, well, what if this happens, then how am I gonna respond? That's not happening, you know? So I just, I still struggle. I'm still anxious about a lot of things as we are, we're human, you know? But I just try and really just think back, okay, God has a plan for me. God's not done with me yet. I need to just be in this current moment and he has the next step planned out. So good, how many of you needed that? Yes, I think we all needed that. I love the verse where it says, don't be anxious about tomorrow, you know, for tomorrow has enough worries of its own. And I think about that, and I love how you said, like, you were worried about so many things that were gonna happen in the future that didn't happen or didn't yeah. have to happen. And I remember being in a dating relationship, and we argued so much about our future, and that wasn't even the guy I was gonna marry. I'm like, man, I spent so much time talking about the future that never happened, you know? And so I think so many times we can get caught up in that, arguing about the future, talking about the future, worrying about the future, when the future is in God's hands. 
You're responsible for how you choose to respond to today. And so think about today. How do you respond today? Many of you are making um, these huge responses to these moments today that are gonna shape your future forever, you know? Let God have that. You are gonna be responsible for giving your life to Jesus today. Michaela, you are such an inspiration. This has been a joy to talk to you. Can we just give it up for Michaela and thank Thank her for everything that she's done? Awesome. Yes, stand up, stand up. She (laughs) deserves a round of applause. Sadie, can I say one more thing? Please say one more thing. I have something big to say. What? Um, So my like goal that I kind of put out there, and again, I, anxious about it every single day. I'm like, I don't know why I said this, but I'm a senior in high school this year and my goal, and I kind of told the world, so I kind of have to do it, is I said I'm gonna walk across the stage at graduation in one way or another. And so there's steps happening to make that happen, which I'm so excited about. But I realized, I was like, graduation is in the spring. And the next time I come to the, LO conference, I'll have to walk in some yes. way. So I'm looking yes. forward to that. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Look, let's take a minute right now. Can everybody stretch out your hands towards Michaela? And can everybody pray? Just speak in faith that that's going to happen. There's the moment in uh, the Bible where Jesus is going to perform a miracle, and he says, If you don't have the faith to believe it, get out of the room because this room is gonna be a room of faith. And when this room brings faith to the picture, I'm about to heal this person. And Michaela just sat here and said, hey, I I just wanna tell everybody this, because I believe it so strongly that I'm gonna walk across the stage, and so we're gonna partner with that, and we're gonna pray. If everybody can um, pray out loud as I pray, and let's just let, you know, bring our request to the Lord. It says, don't be anxious about anything, but with prayer, bring it to the Lord. So we're gonna pray. God, we just thank you so much for Michaela. I thank you for who she is. I thank you for the inspiration she is. God, I thank you that she is an influencer worth following because she is leading people to you. God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, you are a healer, God. You are a healer. We know you can. We know that you're able, even if you don't in this moment, we know that you're God. But God, we do pray in full belief right now that she can be healed. Charlotte said it last night that you might not think that it can be possible because the doctors have said, but God, we know with just one word, the story can be rewritten. So God, I pray that her legs would function and operate the way that they were intended to operate, that they were originally designed and created by your perfect creator hand to operate. God, I pray that her feet would go straight back into alignment, that her hands would go back into alignment, that everything would be back to its original, beautiful, created form, that God, that accident, would have no future marker in her life, God. It would be a part of her story, but it will not be her whole story, God. I thank you for what you're gonna do. I thank you for her faith to believe it. I pray that before graduation, she's walking and she's walking with confidence. I love how your word says the godly walk with integrity. And God, I pray and I thank you that before she physically walks, she spiritually walks with so much integrity and everyone in this room can see that. And it is an inspiration to us all. So thank you for the integrity she walks in. Before she ever walks physically, thank you for the example she walks in spiritually. We love you so much. We believe in faith and we're gonna continue as sisters and friends to pray and believe for what you're gonna do in Michaela's life. So your name we pray, amen. Amen, thank you.